our tutorial, Bruges Godfrey test. Multiple regression assumptions consist of independent variables correct specification, independent variables no linear dependence, regression correct functional form, residuals no autocorrelation, residuals homocelasticity, and residuals normality. This topic is part of multiple regression analysis with our curse. Feel free to take a look at curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading, or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. Residuals no autocorrelation consists of evaluating whether regression residuals or forecasting errors have a constant mean. This is evaluated through Bruce Godfrey autocorrelation test, which consists of using original regression residuals data as dependent variable together with original regression independent variables adding lagged original regression residuals data as independent variables and assessing if lagged original regression residuals data as independent variables are jointly statistically significant. For full reference, I recommend that you read Bruch Testing for Autocorrelation in Dynamic Linear Models, published in Australian Economic Papers in 1978. As a formula, here we have the example of a multiple regression with two independent or explanatory variables in which Current period original regression residuals or forecasting errors are equal to a constant plus a beta 1 coefficient multiplied by the first independent or explanatory variable plus a beta 2 coefficient multiplied by the second independent or explanatory variable plus the sum from the first to the p number of lags included within Bruce Godfrey autocorrelation test of the corresponding gamma coefficients multiplied by previous periods original regression residuals or forecasting errors plus this regression residuals or forecasting errors. And what we're testing is Bruce Godfrey Lagrange multiplier statistic p value. If Bruce Godfrey Lagrange multiplier statistic p value was less than alpha level of statistical significance, then residuals were autocorrelated of order up to p with 1 minus alpha level of statistical confidence. On the other hand, if Bruce Godfrey Lagrange multiplier statistic p value was greater than alpha level of statistical significance, then residuals were not autocorrelated of order up to p with 1 minus alpha level of statistical confidence. Great, so let's go into R Studio so that we can study residuals no autocorrelation with greater detail. Perfect, so here we are within R Studio. In this tutorial, we'll be working within R Tutorial Bruce Godfrey test code file. So the first step within the tutorial is to load its packages. This is done with a library function, and in this tutorial, we'll be using QuantMod and LM test. So we select these two code lines here, then we click run or control on the keyboard, which is equivalent. The following step is to create a data for Bruce Godfrey test. So here we create the object name data, which is equal to read.csv, and within it we have the name of the data file, Bruce Godfrey test data as a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values and stored within the working directory, comma header equals to true. So we select that code line, then we click run or control on the keyboard. So this creates a data object within the global environment as a data frame. And if we click on the spreadsheet kind of icon, it opens the data for us. So first column corresponds to dates, dates with a monthly frequency from the beginning of 1997 all the way to the end of 2016, therefore 20 years of data. Then we have stocks. Stocks corresponds to the dependent or explained variable, and this corresponds to SPY ETF investment vehicle adjusted close prices monthly arithmetic returns. SPY corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle which intends to replicate the Standard & Poor's 500 index and adjusted close prices because they were adjusted for dividends and splits. Therefore here we have those adjusted close prices monthly arithmetic returns. Then we have all the independent or explanatory variables. First, monthly effective yields of 1-year treasuries, 10-year treasuries, high yield, monthly inflation or deflation of consumer price index, producer price index, Prices monthly arithmetic returns for oil. And last, we have monthly arithmetic change of industrial production index and PCE or personal consumption expenditures. So back into the code file, the following step is we're going to convert that data into an XTS, XTS which stands for extensible time series. So we overwrite data as an XTS, and here we select from data, the object we created above, from columns 2 to 10, which includes both the dependent and all the independent variables. 
comma, order by equals as a date, capital D, data, the first column with those dates. So we select the code line here, click run or confluence from the keyboard. And if we reopen the data, we see the same data as before, but now the dates became its index. So now that we have the data ready, we can continue with Bruce Godfrey test. So this is done with BG test function, and within it, we describe the original regression, in which we have stocks dependent variable being explained by all the independent or explanatory variables, one year treasuries, plus 10 year treasuries, plus high yield, plus consumer price index, plus PPI, or producer price index, plus oil, plus industrial production index, plus PCE, or personal consumption expenditures. The data equals to that data object we just created, and the order for this Bruce Godfrey autocorrelation test is order one, therefore one lag. Notice that this order was only included as an educational example, therefore it is not fixed and it can be modified according to your needs. So we select the code line and then we click run or confluence on the keyboard. And this prints Bruce Godfrey test for serial correlation of order up to one. Here we have the description of the corresponding original regression and below printed LM or Lagrange multiplier test statistic right here for Bruce Godfrey test and then the associated p-value as we have it right here. This is the p-value corresponding to the test as mentioned within the slides. Perfect. So now that we've finished studying Bruce Godfrey test, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading, or investment advice. Please, pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.